Have you ever wondered what exactly being seated in heavenly places in Christ means? Let's read Paul's prayer at the end of Ephesians chapter 1. He's just got done writing some great doctrine, some far-reaching and deep doctrine that he knows that we wouldn't be able to understand unless God intervenes and enlightens our understanding and gives us wisdom in the knowledge of him. So let's read it. Ephesians start with uh, chapter 1, verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all i thought there's a lot there isn't there <laughs> that's a lot to grasp hold of i, I want to look at uh, specifically the parts uh, that's talking about God's power, raising Christ and seating Christ at his right hand in heavenly places. And then in chapter 2, we're going to see that God did the same with us. So let's look at Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. And then we'll look at uh, verses 22 and 23. So let me read it. Start with verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ, listen to this, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. I want you to keep that uh, verse 20 in mind as we proceed. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now look at Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 5 and 6, we're going to see something real similar. Except the difference is instead of it being God doing this to Christ or with Christ, He's doing it with us. Listen to this. And even when we are dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. You remember it says in chapter 1, it says uh, God, that God raised Him from the dead. Well, here, God raises us from the dead by making us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved. And raised us up, there it is, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So let's look at this. God raised Christ up from the dead. That's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. God raises us up from the dead. That's Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 and 6. God sat Christ at his right hand in heavenly places. That's in chapter 1, verse 20. God set us in heavenly places in Christ. That's in chapter 2, verse 6. So there we have it. God raised Jesus. God raised us. God set Jesus in heavenly places. God set us in heavenly places. So what can we see from the, these two resurrections? Uh, both, uh, to start with, both were performed by God. One was Christ, the other was ours. We also see that God seated Christ, and God also seated us. Uh, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We are seated in Christ. The location of both seats, Christ and ours, is in heavenly places. So I think we may be able to comprehend somewhat of Christ sitting at the right hand of God and sitting in heavenly places. Because we have a picture of this in the story about the time when Stephen was being stoned to death while Paul was standing by and agreeing to it. This is Acts uh, chapter 7, verses 55 and 56. It says, but he, that would be Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, 
gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. We see here that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and Stephen is referring to the location where Jesus is at as in the heavens. Right? It says he gazed into heaven. With this description and other descriptions of Christ in heaven, we may be able to see and comprehend that Christ is at the right hand of the Father in the heavenlies uh, with our eyes of faith. But to see ourselves seated together with one another, that is all saints, in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father in the heavenlies may be a little bit murky or hard to see and comprehend. I know this was true for me for a long time. Now, just as a side note, uh, you notice that this particular reference to Stephen, uh, Jesus isn't sitting, he's standing. And I heard a preacher one time say this, and I, th I, th I found it to be very interesting. This was several years ago he said this, and I've never forgotten. He, he said, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, except when one of his are being martyred. When he stands, it is as if he's giving honor to the person being martyred while they are being martyred. Now that may be true because we see Jesus standing in the story and God's word says in Psalms 116 verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So getting back to uh, looking at the end of chapter 1, let's look at the end of chapter 1. This is the end of Paul's prayer. In verses 22 and 23 it says, And he put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, I believe the key to understanding the term that when, when it's relating to us as being in Christ and being seated in the heavenlies is to understand what God means when he says that his saints, that's the term that Paul uses in the, at the very start of this chapter, uh, Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, he calls Christians saints so when he says that the saints that they make up the church and that the church at the same time is the body of christ that's going to be the key to understanding how it is we're seated in the heavenlies i don't think that we take seriously or grasp the reality very well of what it means that christians are the body of christ i know this is true for me my prayer lately has been, Lord, help me to know what it is to be a part of the body of Christ. Let me know what it means for the church to be the body of Christ. I want to know. I want to know, Lord. So let's look at Ephesians. We're going to get a, a, a little clearer idea of what it means to be the body of Christ. So in Ephesians 5, 29 and 30, it says, For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does his church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Paul makes the case that as a human will take care of their own flesh, so Jesus takes care of his flesh. And Paul says that we, the church, are his flesh and his bones. That is about as descriptive in human language as it can be to describe what God means by the statement, the church being Christ's body. It cannot be any clearer. The church is Christ's body. Therefore, if Christ sits, it is his body sitting, is it not? If Christ sits at the right hand of God, then it is Christ's body sitting at the right hand of God. If it is Christ sitting in the heavenlies, and we have been made to sit with him in the heavenlies, it is his body sitting in the heavenlies. Do you get the picture now? We are his flesh. We are his bones. When Ephesians uh, chapter 2 verse 6 says, God made us sit together, he is referring to the saints that make up the body of Christ sitting together. And they're sitting together in Christ. This is something that can only be understood through God-enlightened eyes of the heart. Only the eyes of faith can see this. This, this is why Paul prayed in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That would be God's calling on our lives. And that word hope, by the way, means expectation. So 
Let's read it this way. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the expectation of his calling on your life and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Listen to this. Christ's inheritance in the saints. It's literally his body that he is inheriting. All of this is spiritual speaking, of course. But nonetheless, is real. We now know how we are seated in Christ in heavenly places. It is because we are his body. And where his body sits, there we are. God bless you. And y'all have a good day.